Let's see. All right. We're just going to dive right in. So today's masterclass is talking about all about how to convert your inquiries into income so that you can get clients on autopilot without working 24 seven. So hello, you guys. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. I think you guys are just so awesome for already showing up, taking the time. And again, today's masterclass, I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to convert your inquiries into paid premium clients so that you can book your highest paying weddings, even without working 24 seven. So I know there's also a lot of trainings out there for photographers. So I want you to know that this is worth your time or if it's not worth your time. So here's just a few screenshots of some students I've worked with. I've personally worked with thousands of photographers for their success. So I feel like I've learned a thing or two about what works and what doesn't work when it comes to attracting and converting uh, wedding clients. But hello, I'm Rach. I'm a wedding and elopement photographer and also a photography business coach with almost a decade in the industry. And I've shot over a hundred weddings and I've now been able to teach thousands of photographers and I've been able to kind of establish myself as an industry leader in client experience. So with all this experience, I've learned a thing or two about what's actually required to success in this industry. And I also want to make sure that you're in the right place and making sure that you know that this training is not for you if you already get consistent inquiries of ideal clients on a weekly basis. It's also not for you if you're already booking most of your weddings at your highest package, no problem. And this is also not for you if you already have a streamlined workflow and actually book all of your inquiries that come into your inbox. Now, I know that it's not everyone's intention to want to kind of become that Go to booked out photographer, but with my education, that's exactly what happens when you implement these strategies. So now first I want to introduce you to someone that you might recognize. Let's call her maybe the inconsistent photographer. She's a really great photographer and has been in the industry for a while, but she's not experiencing the success and income and business growth that she knows she's capable of. Instead, right now, she's not getting consistent inquiries. And when she is getting inquiries, she's struggling with converting the inquiries into actual bookings. And she's ending up lowballing her pricing just so she can actually book the client, which then leads her to feel stressed out about where her next inquiry is even coming from and when she's going to get it, which leaves her comparing herself and getting caught up in the overwhelm of not knowing what to say, what to post, what to do, or even just which direction to take her business to. She wants to create a really successful wedding photography business, but doesn't know how to go from being ghosted and lowering her prices to having a fully thriving business which then leads her to feeling burnt out and feeling underpaid for all the work she's putting into her business. And I personally know how frustrating this is because I've been there personally. <laughs> and I know also from experience, it's going to continue and happen. If you don't change what you're doing, you're just going to continue to struggle. So by the end of the training, I'm going to show you some ways to fix that and then give you a simple path to become high in demand and confident in charging those premium pricing. And the, the whole reason, I guess, why so many photographers end up struggling and not making the money they know they could is because they believe one or all of the following beliefs of what it takes to create success. So I want to also start off with my signature framework method of the inquiry to income runway for once you get those inquiries, how to convert them into premium clients. And in this training, we're going to cover number one, just section number one, we're scratching the service on just talking a little bit more about getting the inquiry in general. But before we dive into any of that, I really want to talk about the inquiry roller coaster that you may be on or have at least experienced within the last couple of years. So maybe you're riding high, getting a ton of inquiries and feeling on top of the world with how business is going, but then all of a sudden there's a huge decrease, which leads you to feeling really defeated and frustrated, or maybe it's because you haven't been active on social media, or maybe it's because you decided to take a little short break. And then it kind of leaves you feeling defeated to ever take a step back in your business too. But then the increase happens again. It starts to come back and you start to feel on top of the world again until you suddenly realize how busy you are that you can't even keep up with anything else in your business. 
So what happens with these fluctuations is that it causes you to run your business in a roller coaster effect because the increase in inquiries may cause you to put other things in your business aside to focus on booking those clients that you forgot uh, about that all the other things that you have to do too. And then the decrease in the inquiries might cause you to lead with scarcity around your marketing strategy to run. And like, sometimes I just feel like people run to Instagram to try to fix that. So I want to help you run more of a Ferris wheel business where it's running on more of a consistent basis in more of a well-oiled machine, because I understand there are ebbs and flows in entrepreneurship. I get that, but I also want to help you flatten that out so that you can get those consistent inquiries with marketing strategies that don't require you to show up in real time every single day. So firstly, the inconsistent photographer relies on Facebook groups to market her services, lowers her prices because then she's scared of getting ghosted and is exhausted of burnt out, which like then she's running that hamster wheel in her business and has a jam-packed calendar with no free time. And the inconsistent photographer also believes that she should lower her prices and base her prices off what others are doing in the industry and charging in her area, or at least the same price so that she feel like she can book more weddings. She also believes that there should be, that she should be running the Instagram to get more wedding inquiries, which leaves her feeling burnt out and really defeated And that imposter syndrome kicks in and just trying to keep up with the algorithm that is not reliant. Let's be real. And the inconsistent photographer wants to have more of a consistent inquiries and landing into her inbox on a weekly basis. She wants to have a higher conversion rate of what she's actually booking. And she wants to have her dream clients come to her through attraction marketing rather than feeling drained to try to promote herself in air quotes, promote herself to find ideal clients all the time. And this is exactly what the booked out photographer has. She's really uh, confident in her ability to get those consistent inquiries. Therefore, she's confident in her ability to convert them into paid premium clients. She does not rely on Facebook groups to to get inquiries. She's not doing the same strategies as, as everyone else. And she's most certainly isn't basing her price off of what others in her area are charging. And that's exactly what happens when you apply the getting the inquiry portion of my signature inquiry to income method to focus on lead generation that run for you and don't require your every single day attention. But if you're not doing it correctly, what are the risks that you can kind of be running for yourself? So I want to be talk. I want to talk about three booking mistakes that the inconsistent photographer is making that's preventing her from converting inquiries into booked premium clients. And when I say this, I've made these mistakes too. So I just want to be real. So mistake. Mistake number one is that she isn't using the, or that she is using the wrong marketing strategies. So thinking about that, she is reliant on social media, therefore giving her really inconsistent flow of inquiries. Because like I said, things like social media are not reliant. So running to Instagram for leads, trying to keep up with all the trends of reels only to miss that, that trend and then say, oh, I'll just hop on the next one. And then you don't. And then the next trend comes and then you don't, which that obviously leads her feeling really discouraged if she's not consistent. Because again, let's be real. It's really hard to be consistent on social media all the time. Or she's pitching herself in Facebook groups for referrals, hoping that out of the 100 other photographers that also posted that they were available, that they're, they would send them that information and then they would pick her. So in those Facebook groups that you're posting that you're available, hundreds of other p- photographers are posting that they're available, hoping that that person sends them to you and they reach out. So obviously that leads to instant imposter syndrome, instant comparison, and instant dipo- disappointment too, because the chances of that happening are just not reliable again. And another mistake she's making is thinking she needs to pay for her marketing and advertising to get seen in her industry. She hasn't exhausted all of the free marketing strategies and wants to run paid ads for marketing to fix her lead generation problem. And the problem with these three things, in my opinion, is that They all require your everyday real-time attention, which you can see how it leads to burnout really, really fast. 
So then mistake number two of booking mistakes is not asking the right things on her contact form. Therefore, either turning people away from either inquiring or not getting the correct information to craft the client's experience from there. So some things that I suggest personally not having on your contact form are asking for their phone number on your contact form. This one is just my opinion. You do not need their phone number before you even know who they are. They probably don't want to be giving their phone numbers out to people, especially if they're reaching out to a ton of people they haven't even had communication with yet. And you will be getting their phone number in the very next steps of the inquiry to income process of scheduling a phone call with them so that you'll have it. They'll have to plug it in and you'll have it. But you also shouldn't be and don't need to be texting them at all in this process. That's the beauty of this inquiry to income process. You do not need their phone number. You do not need to be texting them at all. That opens up a whole can of worms. I could go into a lot of reasons why this is not good for your communication, not good for your client experience, not good for your boundaries. It's not good for your personal life. It's not good for your mental health. There just isn't any reason you need to be texting your clients, in my opinion. And there's also no reason that you need to be having their phone number at this point in the process. And after kind of having a decade of experience in this industry, I'm such a firm believer in that. And then the next thing not to ask is a required budget. So this might completely turn people away from even filling out your contact form because they either simply don't know what their budget is yet, or they don't know what you charge, or they don't even know about your services, or they just don't know how much a wedding photographer costs in general. So by having this on your contact form, it might make people not even fill it out. An example of this would be when I personally was looking for someone to do branding for me, They had this as a required field on their contact field form, and I had no idea what to even put because I didn't even know what my own budget was, and I surely didn't even know hers because she also didn't have her pricing on her website. So I didn't even reach out to this person, and they missed out on a potential client because of this single thing alone, that they had a required budget on their contact form. So I always suggest either having it not be a requirement on your form, just so they can also have the option to put NA or they're unsure yet, or maybe have a drop down option of your range so that they can see it. So maybe your range is two to 3,000, three to 4,000, four to 5,000, five to 6,000, something like that. So it has at least somewhat of a range. And then the next thing not to ask is also guest count. I know this one has its reasoning for many photographers, especially elopement photographers, but the clients may not know how many people they're having at their wedding yet because they just got engaged. And for me personally, just the way my business runs, this doesn't really change the price of what I'm charging. And again, I know this is very different for every everyone, especially some elopement photographers, but this also ties into the fact of they might just not know, and it might just turn them off of even filling out a contact form with you. And then lastly, what they love most about your work. I see this a lot on on contact forms or any types of questions like this. And I get why people ask this because they want to make sure that they know that you've seen their work and they know what they're getting. But this isn't something that can be asked This isn't something that needs to be asked right now. It can be asked in the next steps of the process, not on the contact form. You don't want to make your contact form about you, if that makes sense. You really want to make it known that you are trying to get to know them and you are trying to serve them. So this shouldn't be anything about you. This form should be about how you can get to know them to craft their experience for the next steps of the process. You can ask these questions in the next step of the process. I think the biggest thing is you just want to get people into your inbox in the most simple no-brainer forms that you can fill or that you can get that information and kind of move on from there. And then mistake number three is that you're not customizing correctly. So the inconsistent photographer, she may think that she's customizing her client experience and response back to her clients, but the truth is she's not doing it on an emotional and connective level based on each client's basic human need. Therefore, missing out on the opportunity to deeply connect and dropping that second piece of missing um, connection piece of the booking process. What I mean by that, for example, when you go to pick out a birthday card for someone, if, for example, if you're going to pick out a card for someone for a gift, what's the first thing you do? Think about it. You visually look and you pick which card is most visually appealing for you. 
And then you go to pick it up, you open the card and you read it. And then what's the next thing you do? If you connect to what that card says, you're going to keep it. If you do not connect to what the words inside that card says, what are you going to do? You're going to put it back and you're going to start looking for other cards that maybe you do connect with. And the same exact thing goes for people picking out wedding photographers. They first come to you visually because we are in a very visual industry. So they're attracted to you visually. And then, but if you can't have that second piece of connection, they're just going to move on right to the next photographer. And that is why it's so important to make sure that you not only have your visual elements, but you have this connection piece. And that's exactly what this whole process is about. So even if they love your work, if you don't customize your connection to them, you're, they're just going to move on right to the next photographer, which is obviously what you don't want. And then you also want to know what types of leads you're dealing with in order to, for these strategies to work. So first off, starting with cold leads. So an example of this would be getting an inquiry from someone who is maybe a referral from another photographer who maybe that photographer is already booked. These types of leads, they're cold leads. They aren't as familiar with your work because they were a referral and they're just taking the photographer who referred you's word for it. So you know that you have a lot more converting and belief shifting to do for this. And I honestly love this one. This is one of my favorite ones because they are so new to your world that you can take it upon yourself to really share your expertise with them as much as possible and really go through this inquiry to income method for this. And then the next one is a warm lead. So this is someone, maybe they've heard of you, maybe they follow you on social media, or maybe they've referenced your website or portfolio, or they've seen your work before. This is also a really fun in-between of you being able to prove your experience matches the level of your work and what you have to offer. Because maybe they've heard of you before, and then maybe they've heard good things, and they're already warm leads, so they kind of know you. This is your time to shine to match your experience to what they have heard from you. And then the last one is a hot lead. So this is someone that you know personally, or they have stated that they've been waiting to book you for a long time. You've known them. They have, they just, they really know you and they want you as their photographer. Not that they deserve any less of an experience from you because they're, you're still going to give them that same experience, but this may take a little less convincing and belief shifting when it comes to the process later that the, the inquiry to income course uh, talks about just because they're already hot lead. They already want you. But so knowing where they are at in like where they're at in the buyer's process journey with you is super important. So you know how much belief shifting needs to happen during this inquiry to income process. It makes a big difference. Now, moving on, we're going to talk about some lead generation strategies that the booked out photographer does that does not require your every single day attention. These are great. <laughs> Bonus. Number one is vendor connections. Think about how many vendors you work with on a weekly basis. So think about also how are you leveraging them to your lead generation strategy? If the answer is you aren't, then it's definitely time to because this is the missed out one. So first off, think of wedding planners, especially if you're wanting to book more premium clients. This can help you get connected and get those inquiries from wedding planners because brides usually have their wedding planner first and they help them find a wedding photographer. So if you can get connected with a handful of wedding planners who can help you create a referral system with you, you could get a really solid stream of premium clients uh, of inquiries really easily. And this has been really powerful for me to book my first couple five-figure wedding packages because they have come from wedding planners or wedding venues. And then the next is jewelers, especially for the guys who are maybe buying rings or maybe looking for a proposal photographer that can, obviously you can lead them and nurture them into having you be their wedding photographer. But by partnering with jewelers, it might help you bring an in inquiries for proposals more than weddings. But again, like I said, having a solid inquiry to income method and solid experience that way, you can lead them into a hot lead of a potential wedding inquiry client too. And then getting connected with wedding venues, which this one is so, so powerful, which kind of ties into my next one of leads generation strategies is venue referrals and becoming preferred photographers on venues vendor list. 
This is a personal fave of mine simply because it's my biggest hands-off lead generator that I know I will get inquiries in on a weekly basis or at least every other week basis most of the time from venues that I love shooting with. So that I know if I take a break from social media, if I step back from my business, it doesn't matter because I know that these inquiries are still going to come flowing in. That's the beauty of having hands-off lead generation strategies. So my suggestion for these is first start off by picking maybe three to five venues that you love to photograph at all the time, or maybe venues that you've want to to shoot at or venues you've shot at before. Um, Again, bonus points if you already have shot there because it will make it a little bit easier, but no worries if you haven't shot there because there's always ways around that too. Because then what you're going to do is you're going to build up a relationship with them to help benefit you both, both of you, to work towards being on their preferred vendor list. So something I like to think about is that you can offer your services because we as photographers have such a leg up in the digital content marketing world these days because everyone wants photos and videos of their product or services for their marketing strategies. So you can get really creative on how you can leverage your expertise to really connect and serve your clients and their clients and leverage it in a way that you're partnering together to serve these couples and clients together as almost a team. And then once you've laid that groundwork foundation, you can send over an email to pitch to work together. And it's so important not to do this before you're not ready and to position it in the correct way. The way I approach this is I personally have an email template that I like to use and share with my students as well. So that that way, you know, you're pitching the right thing to these vendors and to try to get on preferred vendors lists and just trying to connect with people more. And then you're on the preferred vendor list. Again, this comes along with like really nurturing this relationship, continuing on partnership and communication, and also standing out compared to other preferred vendors once you do get on that list. So when you are, when you finally do get to land on being that preferred vendor list, what are you going to do? They might have five other photographers within that preferred vendor list. So what makes you different from them? And why are you the best choice? You need to go even deeper than that even once you get on that preferred vendor list. And another very untapped lead generation strategy, in my opinion, and such a missed opportunity so many photographers could be doing is running a photographer referral kickback program. So think about picking maybe three to five photographers you would love to share your work with and ask them if they'd be interested in partnering for referral swaps. Then taking it even a step further from there to actually make sure that happens and you're actually like, putting, giving referrals back and forth is to offer a 5% referral kickback for any wedding referral who books with you from them. That's money in their pocket, even if they can't take on the wedding themselves. And it gives them more of an incentive for them to actually refer uh, their inquiries to you. But I think the thing, the most important thing you want to do with this is make sure that the photographers you choose to partner with Also have aligned clients as you and vice versa so that you're sharing back and forth. It needs to be mutually beneficial. So this is also really good if you're wanting to book maybe destination weddings or travel work with getting connected with other photographer friends in those areas. And it also just helps increase inquiries by trusted photographers that other people are reaching out to just to help you gain and get more aligned clients as well. So think about the circle of network you could create by just having and running a streamline of referral inquiries coming your way and a way to make a little extra income and just provide income from other people's people as well too. If you can pick three to five other photographers, you can have a really streamlined network here. So I want you to ask yourself, are you kind of ready to attract and convert consistent stream of inquiries into premium clients or more importantly, work less and serve more with a larger impact without running yourself to the ground? Now, I know you might be thinking this all sounds wonderful, but you might be worried that Like, I can't do this because I don't have a large social media following, which is exactly what the inconsistent photographer often might think as well. But in reality, the booked out photographer thinks a little bit differently about this problem. And instead she thinks, I'm not reliant on social media following to bring in and book all of my clients. And that's what I invite you to step into believing as well, because that makes the biggest, biggest difference here. 
And the inconsistent photographer also might say, I'm already drowning in my social media. I don't have time to add on these other lead generation strategies. Well, the booked out photographer says, I take the time to establish the foundation so I don't fall victim to the algorithm while I bring in consistent aligned inquiries. And this is exactly what Lacey implemented into her business to get huge results with that. So when she came to me, she didn't really know how to market her business in an effective way. She was basing all of her pricing on what other people around her were charging, and she didn't really have a clear brand either, but she wanted to be charging more and standing out. Now she's getting more inquiries, but can take on less weddings because she's been able to quadruple her prices that she charges for weddings and is booking her highest package consistently and getting on ideal preferred vendor list to help with her lead generation too. So she says, since implementing your strategies and processes, I've been able to 4X my pricing for wedding packages. You know your stuff and I'm forever grateful. So that's just a little insight into what the, just the getting the inquiry section income method can do for you. There's so much more to even that section alone, but then let alone all the other five elements too. You also may think, but I'm already over delivering to my clients by sending them information they need right away when they book. But the booked out photographer knows that she sends the right information at the right time so she doesn't overwhelm her clients and is confident in that she is providing the best possible experience every single time because of it. And the inconsistent photographer thinks, well, nobody's ever told me that I need to connect with my clients in this specific way. Whereas the booked out photographer knows exactly what to send to create the best possible customized emotional and connective service possible for them. And this is a quick screenshot too of a testimonial from a student once she applied the custom proposal section and resources that I teach my clients to or my students to. And it's resulted in her booking her highest package that she's ever booked. And that is just the power in the in this whole getting the inquiry and this inquiry to income method. And the inconsistent photographer may be thinking her clients already have fun at her session. So she's providing them a really good experience already. Well, but it's the book out photographer knows how to create a customized experience inspired by the couple instead of getting inspiration from other photographers. And she knows that there's so much more deeper connection happening than surface level of things like just playing music or something like that. So would you rather be the inconsistent photographer who misses out on work with dream clients, has to book more weddings just to make more wet money, and then get stuck in overwhelm because she doesn't have a clear roadmap of lead generation strategies and how to convert them into bookings? Or would you rather be a booked out photographer who is the go-to photographer in their area and is high in demand? She's getting consistent inquiries. She's not reliant on social media for them. She's on top on the top of the referral list for vendors and is working half the number of days, but is making more income because you literally have the decision to make. You can make that right now. So I want you to think, and I want you to ask yourself, what do you desire this proposal and booking season to look like for you? Is it still running the inquiry roller coaster of not knowing when or where your next inquiry is coming from? Or is it running a Ferris wheel more of consistent inquiries? So my brand new course is launching today. It's called the Inquiry to Income, and you're getting the very first exclusive access to it and very exclusive first just announcement of it with bonuses, of course, because you are here and I'm so excited that you're here. And this really takes you step-by-step from getting even how to get to the inquiry all the way through booking the client using my signature inquiry to income method. So here's a quick walkthrough of what the behind the scenes of the course looks like. Module one is getting the inquiries. Module two is crafting your response. Module three is the phone call. Module four is custom proposals. Module five is the follow-up. Module six is securing the booking. And of course, there's bonuses, obviously, because you're here with the plug and play email templates for your entire workflow. My Rachel Traxler presets, a collaboration pack with G presets, G presets, and then a one live group coaching call for you to get live coaching by me. 
And you can get started for all of this too today for either four payments of $87 or $297 when you pay in full. And I know there's a link on this the screen here. I'm not sure if you can click it. So I'll just pop it in the chat right now too so that you can have it that way if you wanted to. But the inquiry to income like method is for you if you're ready to start generating really consistent aligned inquiries in your inbox on a weekly basis. You're ready to charge premium pricing for your expertise to clients who line up for your services without question, so you don't have to go seek them out. And you're also ready to actually convert your inquiries into clients using the inquiry to income method that no one else is doing. I promise you that and allowing you to really stand out in your market. So one thing I know to be true is that when you go all in and creating success in your life and business, life gets to look a little bit different. So for instance, I only book 10 weddings with premium clients that book out really fast because of my inquiry to income method. And I also have an associate photographers on my team to fill the rest of the inquiries that I get to. And this is a hundred percent available to you when you take the next steps toward that too. And it's also not just me too, that's been able to create this type of success for my business that uh, my students have been able to also see big shifts in implementing which I te what I teach, which is really exciting for me. That's how I know this works. And again, this is Lacey, who I just talked about. Lacey came in, came to me wanting a better handle over her marketing and getting more leads and figuring out what helps her stand out in the industry. Now she's booking aligned wedding clients at her highest packages. And this is Christina. After a dry spell of inquiries, she used my workflow templates and custom response and follow-up methods to go through the inquiry process and ended up booking the wedding at her highest package at one of her favorite venues. And this is Megan, who also used the strategy to help generate leads and convert them into bookings and ended up booking a 25% conversion rate of her highest packages in one week. And then this is Lizzie, who is another student of mine who also used this exact strategy resulting in her booking her highest package. So as you can see, this isn't just a couple examples. I could go on and on. This is a very normal thing um, for my coaching students to do, but the inquiry to income method is the exact booking process that happens that they are using and implementing that I use to teach and convert, uh, convert into paid bookings, which obviously these are things are also very, very doable for you with the right approach and the right strategies. So like I said, my brand new course launches today called the inquiry to income, which takes you step-by-step step from even getting to how to get the inquiry all the way through booking the client using my signature inquiry to income method. And since it launches literally today, and you guys are the first ones to know about it, you can get started right away with it too. And obviously there's bonuses because you guys are here on the live call with me, which I'm so excited for. And they're very exclusive bonuses to you. Number one is my plug and play email templates for my entire workflow. And you can plug in for your entire workflow. Also, you get my Rachel Trexer golden pr uh, preset collaboration pack for free. And then also I'm doing just for the inquiry to income students that if you enroll in the course, a live group coaching call with me to ask any questions and get live coaching on the inquiry to income process, which these things, like I said, are very doable for you right now. And it is now open. So your next steps for it would be to pick a payment plan and then you can literally just get started right away with it. So if you haven't already, I'm not sure if you're able to click the link on here, or if not, I typed it in the chat as well. And I put it in the chat so you can click it too. Um, so you just pick a payment plan and you can get immediate access to everything, get started straight away so that you can get ready for like the business, get the back end of your business ready for booking and proposal season that is just right around the corner. So at this point, obviously there's two different mentalities that you can have. Is it how the inconsistent photographer may think of, I don't have the resources to invest right now? Or number two, how the confident photographer and booked out photographer thinks, which is I make decisions based on where I want to be rather than where I am right now. The inconsistent photographer also thinks I can figure it out all on my own. Whereas the, con the confident and booked out photographer thinks I'm going to fast track my results when I learn from people who have gone before me, therefore helping me get there even quicker. So quick, one more time, you can get started today. Right now it launches um, with either four payments of 87 or 297 when you pay in full 
and you get all of these bonuses, which the bonus, the bonuses alone is at a value at like almost $800. So it's a very exciting one. So if you feel like this is kind of what you need right now to get prepped for booking season, it's ready for you. You can either click this link, click in the chat, or you can visit racheltraxer.com slash inquiry dash two dash income, and you can get started right away. But I'll just end with some Q&A. So I'll open it up to you guys. If you have any questions at all, pop them in the chat and I would love to answer them. So just let me know. I'll start my video here and we can just chat. So let me know if you guys have any questions in the chat about any of this, any of the inquiry to um, inqu income process, any questions when it comes to lead generation, any questions that you have that it comes from basically like getting an inquiry and converting them into clients. I will sit here for just a minute and see if you have any questions. Oh, I do remember somebody said that the chat was disabled. So <laughs> not sure if you guys can even ask me any questions, actually. Um, I'm not sure what happened with that, but I'll see if I can on the back end quick, see if I can even fix that. But if not, make sure just to send me a DM on Instagram. If you have any questions, my handle is at Rachel Traxler. If you have any questions at all um, about this process, because I'm sorry, I don't think the chat works for some odd reason. <laughs> so let me know. Um, email me, DM me if you have any questions. I'm loving also seeing your guys' notifications come through on my phone that <laughs> people who are booking the course and enrolling in the course. I'm so excited. I'm seeing you guys coming rolling through. So I'm really excited for you guys to get started. All of the details, you can literally get started today and consume the course in a week if you wanted. So again, sorry, the chat doesn't work. Let me know if you guys have any questions at all about anything. Just DM me at Rachel Traxler on Instagram or email me at hello at racheltraxler.com and I'll make sure to answer them there. But thank you guys so much for attending this live masterclass. I love doing these things live for you. Again, sorry about the chat. Just DM me <laughs> and I'll answer any questions you have. But thank you guys so much. I hope you have an awesome day and I'm excited to see keep seeing these rolling through. Okay, bye you guys.